For when I went in for my first MRI, ideally it would be nice to go in one time to the doctor or for one scan. Um, and it was ordered with contrast. It was a, it's called a gadolinium contrast agent. I didn't know it at the time, but it was just called a contrast that I was going to be given. But I asked if I could have the full scan done in, in just one setting, and they told me no, that I would need to come back the next day to finish the scan on my back and my neck and my, my head. And I said, oh, well, I'm really, really patient. I could stay in the scanner as long as it is necessary. And they said no. And I said, so I'll have to come back tomorrow and get another injection. And they said yes. And I said, well, is it safe? And they said, absolutely, it's safe. Just drink plenty of water and it'll be out of your system in a few hours. And so that's what I thought. And a few hours later, you began to feel effects. What, what were those? I would say, I would say probably looking back, I was starting to feel effects immediately, probably not connecting anything necessarily to an MRI at the time. But after the third scan, within eight days, I was definitely noticing that I was something was wrong and it started out with this intense burning inside my body that I can't describe it's like somebody's poured acid on your tissues and I just had this extreme burning that was happening and this is about a day after my third MRI it was at about one o'clock in the morning and I am a healthy woman I mean I'm the lady on the total gym infomercials next to him I've been fit my whole life so to have anything happen to me like this, it's just, it was, it was a nightmare, to say the least. But I wake him up at one o'clock in the morning and I'm like, there is something terribly wrong with me. You've got to take me to the hospital right now. And so up he pulls up, you know, puts his sweats on and off we go. I get to the hospital and I explain that I'm just, you know, what's wrong? And I'm like, I don't know. All I can tell you is I'm burning. I'm burning everywhere. And I just, I need you to help me. And it's typical, probably ER procedures. They should get start you on an IV, um, give me some pain meds and what they call um, a GI cocktail for this burning, and send me back home after a few hours. And this was a repeat cycle for five or six different um, ER visits within a very short period of time. With each each new visit, the burning was spreading throughout my body. About the third. I think it was the third trip, and there's so many of them. I mean, it was literally a nightmare. But on my third trip, I remember being in my bathroom that evening, and it felt like something had hit my lymphatic system, and it felt like if maybe you were being injected with something, I felt like I'd been seeded with like thousands of tiny little seeds or ants crawling all over me, and I just, I grabbed my counter, and I said, dear God, I'm in trouble, I'm in, I'm in trouble. And so when I'm at the hospital, you know, I'm asking them, you know, could this possibly be related to any tests that I've had done? And they said, no, your kidneys look great. You know, it can't possibly be from any of these scans, you know, and so it was a mystery at the time for what was happening to me. And how did you finally make the link that it was caused by the contrast? There, it, it was, there was no way of knowing what it was at that time. I mean, doctors are, are baffled. I'm in and out of the hospital. I'm trying to link things to what could have possibly happened to me. But when doctors tell you, well, it, it can't be possibly from your scans, your renal function is normal. At that time, I never even heard of the word gadolinium. So I'm thinking, okay, well, doctors know best, right? Doctors know best. So this went on from the beginning of February all the way up until I think the end of April, the beginning of May, and I was in and out of the ER room close to where we live, and then I was in and out of a major hospital in Houston. They checked me from head to toe for everything, including lumbar punctures, and I just continued to get worse, and my brain was so damaged. I had horrible brain damage. I couldn't, I couldn't think anymore, um, any type of, um, cognition, being able to articulate, my memory, uh, I had muscle wasting, I was hypoglycemic and hypermetabolic to where my whole body was just tremoring at this time. It and, was scaring me to death, uh, Penny. Yeah. You know, and I said, it's not, it, nothing's going on here. She's dying. She's dying right in front of me here at this hospital. Yeah. And I said, I've got to get a hold of somebody. So I called uh, uh, Dr. 
Fong uh, in Reno, uh, uh, Nevada. Nevada. He's an integrative doctor. Yeah, and I called uh, Dr. Fong. I said, Doc, here's what's happening to my uh, wife, you know, with Gina. He knows her. And I said, I don't know what to do. He says, get here right now. It's a critical. It's a critical to get her here. Yeah. Well, she's really bad. So I, so I got a, I got a jet, and I got a paramedic and a bed, and I got her in the jet and got her to Gino, uh, Gina, yeah. for for uh, you know for uh, Dr. Fogg, and uh, we spent four months there. Wow. Yeah, we were and he, and that's where the doctor made the connection. Then. Well, we were, at, we were in Reno for five months, yeah. and all he knew is that I was really, really sick. And this is an integrative hospital that just treats outside of mainstream medicine. And he just took a chance that maybe something was connected to my, my scans, and they just ran some chelation tests on me. I cannot begin to tell you by the time that I got there, I now, my ribs are completely glued together, my intercostal muscles, I can't breathe anymore. I can't do that. I'm having to breathe from my abdomen. My left arm is completely drawn up like this. I can no longer swallow. And so they're having to boil my food just so I can get enough nutrition so I can eat. And I got to the point where I just, I, that was the only way that I could get any type of nutrition. And this went on for weeks just trying to stabilize me there. I had IVs literally every day for five months. Wow. Five months, my husband slept on a couch next to me and read 17 books. I can laugh now, it wasn't funny then. <laughs> but he, he stayed by my side for five months while I was in, in this hospital, it, giving me nutrition and, and things like that just to get me stronger and, and try to get me back on my feet. But it was, it's not very pleasant to eat baby food. <laughs> Yeah, and that's really what I had to do. So after, you know, after boiling my food for quite a few weeks, I was able to graduate to baby food. But I was very, very, very sick 